I'm going to show you the game between Vincent Keimer and Georg Meyer from the Grenka Chess Classic. This was a beautiful endgame, so stick around, you're in for a treat. Remember, if you're not subscribed to the channel, then do click on the button below, and if you want to support the channel, then do check out the links to PayPal and patreon.com, and you'll find those in the video description. So far, Vincent Keimer not having a great tournament, zero out of four. Georg Meyer, his opponent here from Germany as well, also having a rough time on one out of four. So could one of them pick themselves up by beating the other tail ender? Well, uh, the opening went pretty well for, for Keimer. Um, there were some ups and downs, but basically they've arrived in an endgame where Vincent is a, a pawn up. But actually, Georg Meyer's position is, uh, I think, tenable here. He has very active pieces, the king in particular, of course. And these pawns make a big difference as they're, they're pressing high up the board. It's very hard for white to make any kind of progress here, but... Well, Keimer played to a4, <clears throat> which I think is a reasonable start. Just fixing that pawn on b6. So it means that, you know, one day it might be possible for that bishop to come around to attack it, or who knows, maybe even the king. Rook e4 looks solid. And Keimer could find nothing better than to offer an exchange of rooks. But Black's king takes the place of the rook. And it's in a really beautiful position in the middle of the board. I mean, if if white goes wrong here, uh, black could even be better. So, for example, if that pawn comes up, then, you know, this, this king could slip in to, to take the h-pawn. Um... Kaiman now plays f5. I will return to this position later, but let me. I want to play through the whole game first. h4. So, continuing this press with the pawns on the king side. And Kaiman offers an exchange of bishops, which has to be accepted. Otherwise, this pawn will run through. So, bishop takes. And now we're getting to. A crucial position where it's turning into a race, so every tempo, every move counts here. We're diving in. And that's why it's good to have your pawns far advanced. Okay, let me show you what happens. I will return to some of these positions in a moment. So it's a big race to get the pawn down the boards, and there we go. Keimer is the first with a queen, but after g2, you can see this one is just one step away. And this one is following close behind as well. So what does white do about this? Well. First of all, the task is to bring the queen closer with some checks. So we can do that like this. And black's king shuffles. And king h3 played here again. Incidentally, if the king comes down to h1, then white wins instantly with queen here. And after black makes a queen, then check. And now all you need to do is exchange queens and take the pawn and the b-pawn obviously runs through. So coming back to this position, that was queen c7 check and king h1. So that's why king h3 has to be played here. Queen d7 check. Okay, so look, the queen comes closer. So it's this very familiar staircase routine that the Queen is carrying out here. Very common idea in Queen endgames. And Queen e1. So finally we see what uh, Kaima is up to here. Queen e1. Very clever move. 
Black needs to be able to play king h2, but in this case it's simply not possible because of queen takes pawn check. So you can see that black's king is severely restricted here. Aha, but that gives us a clue as to a possible defence. And here is where Maya played pawn to c4. Now that is a really tricky move. Here, Keimer played b4. If pawn takes pawn, then there's a stalemate trick. Queen, check, white has to take, and it's stalemate. Stalemate is a theme that I'm really um, a fan of or something I concentrate on quite a lot in my broadcasts. If anyone's seen my hangouts, uh, my broadcasts on, um, chess, on playchess.com as well, it's uh, a theme that is so common in end games and in studies as well and I often feature it. Um, so Kaima played b4 so there's the trick of course it's simply not stalemate now because black has this pawn but of course Maya wants to get rid of this pawn as quickly as possible. King c6 that's a very good move, a precise move as we're going to see later on. For a start it gets the the king away from that check here. c2 and this is very important. Maya now plays queen, uh, excuse me, Kaima plays queen c1 to block that pawn. If b5 that would be a mistake because queen and then we're back to this routine again and stalemate. So with the pawn on c2, Kaima now plays queen c1, simply blocking that pawn. King h2, and now takes the pawn, because of course it's pinned here. Now king h1 loses in the same way as before, after queen h7 taking the pawn. So king h3 again, so we're back to this position, but it's a little bit different because white has this passed b pawn and this introduces uh, an extra possibility queen e2 pinning and preventing the pawn queening now once again watch out for the stalemate so if queen f2 then we're back with queen and stalemate so what does white do Let's have a look. Well, here, king h3 would allow queen g1, and there is no way through that. So now h3, b5. It's getting critical. These pawns are getting closer. Queen g3. Now, again, if black makes a queen, then Queen takes pawn check and you exchange queens and the b-pawn goes through. So h2, scary. Queen f3 prevents the pawn advancing, so the king has to come here. Now there's a nice trick, a very a very familiar trick if, uh, from endgame studies and, well, just endgames in general. If king h1, this actually loses immediately of this very sweet move. I once actually had this in a game and managed to deliver mate. Actually with, there was a rook on g2 rather than the pawn but anyway that's another story. Yeah that's a very nice finish. So in this position after queen e3 the king has to come to f1. Scary. Both pawns could possibly queen. But now here's the trick. Queen f4. This is beautiful. And now the queen is in the perfect position, restricting the king, as we'll see. Pawn advances, allowing black to make a queen, and then b7. So as I said, the queen restricts black's king. The queen also prevents queen h3 check. So what a beautiful position. So the queen moves back. and b8 queen, king h1. 
So the game isn't quite over. It's a scary situation. So black still wants to make a queen, but in fact, everything is under control. Queen f3 pinning and winning. And, well, if white is, is given a move, then th this queen will come into action and, and it's going to be winning. So Maya gives some checks, hoping that something will turn up, but with some precise steps, then the king actually moves out of trouble. And there's nothing that Maya can do here. So after this move, you can see there are no sensible checks. All these squares, these potential checking squares, are covered by white's queens. And here, Maya decided to resign the game. Um, absolutely superb finish from Vincent Keimer. He calculated really precisely. In fact, Maya could have made a draw in a couple of ways. First of all, I'll take you right back to the start of the end game. After this clever move, f5, in fact, this can be taken. King d3 shuts out the king for the moment, and that bishop wants to target the pawn on b6. But in fact, this is still a draw. Let me show you. After this, that prevents the king coming to e3. h3 is a good move to target the pawn on h2. And it still seems as though the, the position is very good for white because the b6 pawn is being targeted. But in fact, black survives this with some, with some tricks. So if king takes pawn, then c4 check. And this pawn is going to run through. And if bishop c7 wanting to take here, then bishop g1. So if bishop b6, then this pawn drops and that one is going through. So this is actually a positional draw because white simply cannot take that pawn on b6 and, and black just needs to, to hold that position. So that's the first draw. And then I'm going to take you to this position. Now this is where Maya took on g2 and well we saw Vincent found a beautiful way to win. In fact there is a way to draw here by giving up the c pawn straight away. And I'm sure you recognize the difference. Here, white can't pass because that pawn will go to the queening square. And after pawn takes pawn, we're back in this situation where now the stalemate tricks work. So let's just see this. And in fact, white has no way to make progress in this position. So let's do that whole staircase business again and just show you. Let's get here. And check. And Queenie won. This is the way that uh, Kaima made progress. But remember, the, this pawn, these pawns were still on the board. And here, it's stalemate. So that is the difference. He basically had to give that pawn up a few moves back, but perhaps uh, Georg didn't realize the seriousness of the situation at that point. In any case, I'm delighted for Vincent Keimer that he has won a game and, uh, you know, gives, gives him confidence that he can cut it at this level. Um, so we'll see what happens in the rest of the tournament. Thanks for watching.